Chapters 1 through 5 of The Book of Acts from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leon Meyer. The Book of Acts from the World English Bible. Chapters 1 through 5. Chapter 1. The first book I wrote, Theophilus, concerned all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was received up, after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these also he showed himself alive after he suffered, by many proofs, appearing to them over a period of forty days, and speaking about God's kingdom. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them, Don't depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father, which you heard from me. For John indeed baptized in water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, are you now restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It isn't for you to know times or seasons which the Father has set within his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. When he had said these things, as they were looking, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. While they were looking steadfastly into the sky as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white clothing, who also said, you men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who was received up from you into the sky, will come back in the same way as you saw him going into the sky. Then they returned to Jerusalem, from the mountain called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had come in, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. That is, Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord continued steadfastly in prayer and supplication, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In these days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, and the number of names was about 120, and said, Brothers, it was necessary that this scripture should be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was guide to those who took Jesus, for he was numbered with us, and received his portion in this ministry. Now this man obtained a field with a reward for his wickedness, and, falling headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines gushed out. It became known to everyone who lived in Jerusalem that in their language that field was called a keldama, that is, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be made desolate, let no one dwell therein, and let another take his office. Of the men, therefore, who have accompanied us, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day that he was received up from us, of these one must become a witness with us of his resurrection. They put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. They prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all men, show which one of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas fell away, that he might go to his own place. They drew lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Chapter 2 now, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came from the sky a sound like the rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Tongues like fire appeared and were distributed to them, and one sat on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under the sky. When this sound was heard, the multitude came together, 
and were bewildered, because everyone heard them speaking in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, aren't all these who speak Galileans? How do we hear, everyone in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them speaking in our languages the mighty works of God. They were all amazed and were perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? Others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and spoke out to them, You men of Judea, and all you who dwell at Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. For these aren't drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what has been spoken through the prophet Joel. It will be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Yes, and on my servants, and on my handmaidens in those days, I will pour out the Spirit, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the sky above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. It will be that whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved by God to you by mighty works and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, even as you yourselves know, him, being delivered up by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by the hand of lawless men, crucified and killed, whom God raised up, having freed him from the agony of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh also will dwell in hope, because you will not leave my soul in Hades. Neither will you allow your Holy One to see decay. You made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may tell you freely of the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was his soul left in Hades, nor did his flesh see decay. This Jesus God raised up, to which we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted by the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, which you now see and hear. For David didn't ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit by my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Let all the house of Israel therefore know certainly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For to you is the promise, and to your children, and to all who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. With many other words he testified, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. There were added that day about three thousand souls. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and prayer. Fear came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. 
All who believed were together, and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods, and distributed them to all, according as any one had need. Day by day, continuing steadfastly, with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread at home, they took their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the assembly, day by day, those who were being saved. Chapter 3 Peter and John were going up into the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. A certain man, who was lame from his mother's womb, was being carried, whom they laid daily at the door of the temple which is called Beautiful, to ask gifts for the needy of those who entered into the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive gifts for the needy. Peter, fastening his eyes on him, with John said, Look at us. He listened to them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have, that I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. He took him by the right hand and raised him up. Immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Leaping up, he stood and began to walk. He entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him, that it was he who used to sit begging for gifts for the needy at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. As the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. When Peter saw it, he responded to the people, You men of Israel, why do you marvel at this man? Why do you fasten your eyes on us, as though by our own power or godliness we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had determined to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, to which we are witnesses. By faith in his name, his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which is through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, brothers, I know that you did this in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but the things which God announced by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, so that there may come times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Christ Jesus, who was ordained for you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God spoke long ago by the mouth of his holy prophets. For Moses indeed said to the fathers, The Lord God will raise up a prophet for you from among your brothers, like me. You shall listen to him in all things whatever he says to you. It will be that every soul that will not listen to that prophet will be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel, and those who followed after, as many as have spoken, they also told of these days. You are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, In your seed will all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, Jesus, sent him to you first, to bless you, in turning away every one of you from your wickedness. Chapter 4 as they spoke to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came to them, being upset because they taught the people and proclaimed in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was now evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of men came to be about five thousand. It happened in the morning that their rulers, elders, and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem. 
Annas, the high priest, was there, with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and as many as were relatives of the high priest. When they had stood them in the middle of them, they inquired, By what power, or in what name, have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, You rulers of the people, and elders of Israel, if we are examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, be it known to you all, and to all the people of Israel, that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, in him does this man stand here before you whole. He is the stone which was regarded as worthless by you, the builders, which has become the head of the corner. There is salvation in none other, for neither is there any other name under heaven that is given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and had perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They recognized that they had been with Jesus. Seeing the man who was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? Because indeed a notable miracle has been done through them, as can be plainly seen by all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we can't deny it. But so that this spreads no further among the people, let's threaten them, that from now on they don't speak to anyone in this name. They called them, and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, judge for yourselves, for we can't help telling the things which we saw and heard. When they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them, because of the people, for everyone glorified God for that which was done. For the man on whom this miracle of healing was performed was more than forty years old. Being let go, they came to their own company, and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. They lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and said, O Lord, you are God, who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who, by the mouth of your servant, David, said, Why do the nations rage, and the peoples plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth take a stand and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly, in this city, against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your counsel foreordained to happen. Now, Lord, look at their threats, and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through your name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were gathered together. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. The multitude of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Not one of them claimed that anything of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Great grace was on them all, for neither was there among them any who lacked, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made to each, according as any one had need. Joses, who, by the apostles, was surnamed Barnabas, which is, being interpreted, son of encouragement, a Levite, a man of Cyprus by race, having a field, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Chapter 5 But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit, and to keep back part of the price of the land? While you kept it, didn't it remain your own? 
after it was sold wasn't it in your power how is it that you have conceived this thing in your heart you haven't lied to men but to god ananias hearing these words fell down and died great fear came on all who heard these things the young men arose and wrapped him up and they carried him out and buried him about three hours later his wife not knowing what had happened came in peter answered her tell me whether you sold the land for so much she said yes for so much but peter asked her how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the lord behold the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out she fell down immediately at his feet and died the young men came in and found her dead and they carried her out and buried her by her husband great fear came on the whole assembly and on all who heard these things by the hands of the apostles many signs and wonders were done among the people they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. None of the rest dared to join them, however the people honored them. More believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. They even carried out the sick into the streets, and laid them on cots and mattresses, so that as Peter came by, at the least his shadow might overshadow some of them. Multitudes also came together from the cities around Jerusalem bringing sick people, and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy, and laid hands on the apostles, and put them in public custody. But an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors by night, and brought them out, and said, Go stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. When they heard this, they entered into the temple about daybreak, and taught. But the high priest came, and those who were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But the officers who came didn't find them in the prison. They returned and reported, We found the prison shut and locked, and the guards standing before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now, when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priests heard these words, they were very perplexed about them, and what might become of this. One came and told them, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple, standing and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers, and brought them without violence, for they were afraid that the people might stone them. When they had brought them, they set them before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, Didn't we strictly command you not to teach in this name? Behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you killed, hanging him on a tree. God exalted him with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel in remission of sins. We are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. But they, when they heard this, were cut to the heart, and determined to kill them. But one stood up in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, honored by all the people, and commanded to put the apostles out for a little while. He said to them, You men of Israel, be careful concerning these men, what you were about to do. For before these days, Thudas rose up, making himself out to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were dispersed, and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the enrollment, and drew away some people after him. He also perished, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered abroad. Now I tell you, withdraw from these men, and leave them alone. For if this counsel, or this work, is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow it, and you would be found even to be fighting against God. 
They agreed with him. Summoning the apostles, they beat them, and commanded them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. They therefore departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for Jesus' name. Every day, in the temple and at home, they never stopped teaching and preaching Jesus the Christ. End of chapters 1 through 5